Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Adam and today we're going to be going over my top three stock picks for 2021, okay? These are three stocks that I think will outperform the market in 2021. And I mean, I put my money where my mouth is and I have shares in all three of these stocks, okay? These represent some of my largest investments uh, in the stock market, okay? So let's get right into it. And I mean, I think it's gonna be cool just to track the progress of these three stocks uh, over the year and see how they perform relative to the market and, you know, kind of go on record and say that I think these three stocks will be excellent, okay? So the first one here is Walgreens Boots Alliance, and I've talked about this stock before, and it has been absolutely beaten down, okay? This was a $60 stock earlier in the year, and it's down by about like 27% still, um, and even if we're looking at the top losers in the Dow 30, you know, one strategy is you actually pick some of the top losers in the Dow 30 uh, from the year before and hope that they will return nice profits uh, in the year to come, okay? Um, I mean, I don't follow that strategy, but I mean, I'm just saying that that is one strategy, okay? And we can see here the top loser is Boeing in the Dow 30, down by 37%, and really, literally night, right next to it, number two is Walgreens Boots Alliance at negative 30% return, okay? Um, and I mean, I'm so bullish on the stock because of a couple of factors, okay? And I think the main one is because they will be distributing the pandemic vaccine, okay? The, the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine and all the other ones that are going to come out, like the Moderna one, okay? And what does this do? Well, this increases foot traffic to uh, Walgreens stores, okay? And by increasing foot traffic, you pretty much automatically increase sales, all right? You know, they refill a prescription, they bar, buy a bottle of water, buy some milk, etc. okay? So, I mean, if you don't know what Walgreens is, basically it's it's one of the largest pharmaceutical to retail giants in uh, America. It also has its boots operations, which operates out of UK, and also has its wholesale business, which is actually going to be uh, bought out by um, this company, Amerisource Bergen, by about six, for six and a half billion. And I think that's why the stock is up uh, on the day by four and a half percent, okay? So again, one of the main reasons, again, I like Walgreens is you're looking at a forward P of eight, okay? And in a market where everything is incredibly frothy, you know, stock prices are sky high, I think this represents an incredibly attractive valuation. And I think you cannot go wrong on Walgreens. Uh, and I own about $1,600 of Walgreens in my stock portfolio, okay? Um, and again, looking at the news, um, Amerisaurus Bergen, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, is actually going to buy Walgreens unit for six and a half billion. Now this is a retail unit. Um, and so Amerisaurus Bergen Corporation agreed to buy Walgreens Boots Alliance pharmaceutical wholesale business for about six and a half billion in cash and stock, extending the US drug distribution giants reach in Europe. Okay. So again, many like Walgreens and its attractive valuation now. Uh, and again, that's a sign of, you know, not only do you get Walgreens for its dividend, which is about like 4.3%, but you also will see hopefully capital appreciation of the stock price in 2021. And I mean, I think again, the main driving forces are incredibly low valuation where, you know, hopefully Wall Street is actually going to pick up on this. Uh, plus, of course, um, them distributing the vaccine. And again, not only people get the vaccine once, but people get the vaccine twice, okay? In order to increase immunity, people get the Pfizer BioNTech one, uh, I think I believe a month apart, okay? So they get two doses to boost immunity, all right? Which is just gonna increase foot traffic to Walgreens by insane amounts, okay? And I think that'll be a driving factor of Walgreens in the next year or two, okay? And that's why I'm holding Walgreens, all right? And the next one is a more controversial play. Um, and this is, Alibaba Group Holdings trades on the New York Stock Exchange under BABA -B -A, Baba. Um, and the reason for this significant dip over the past six months, we can see it traded at around 317 US dollars, but now it's trading at 28% discount to that uh, at around $227. Okay, about like $100 less uh, than its highs. All right. And why am I so bullish in this company? Well, one, we have to understand that, you know, Alibaba is an e-commerce giant, okay? Uh, it rivals the likes of Amazon and it's said to be the Amazon of China. Um, and one could argue even like China has a much bigger market, a much faster growing middle class um, <clears throat> than the US does, which could be really good news for Alibaba and is really good news for Alibaba. And we've already seen this with their revenue growth uh, consistently. Alibaba generates insane returns, which we're going to look at, okay? Um, however, this negative downtrend is a concern for many investors and is the reason for um, the reason for this is because of potential antitrust regulations against Alibaba. 
So there's a long uh, story, but pretty much what happened was, you know, Jack Ma said some things that the Chinese Communist Party didn't like. And because of that, <clears throat> or, you know, Chinese Communist Party says it's unrelated, but potentially because of that, um, they also uh, inhibited the IPO of Ant Group, which is Alibaba's fintech arm. Um, and they're also, again, said that now they're discussing uh, regulations against Alibaba so it doesn't have or doesn't engage in these monopolistic practices. Right. But again, I believe that, um, you know, with tech giants like Facebook, Amazon, Google, they are very prone to these antitrust regulations. Who knows how it operates in China? <clears throat> but these are very, very common in the States. OK, Facebook is facing a really big one, as is Google. All right. So I don't think that this damage will likely be too harsh or will hinder the revenue growth of Alibaba by a crazy amount, okay? Um, however, investors are very, very cautious of this. If you want, you can pause this. Um, and, you know, again, what happens usually is with a little bit of bad news, investors panic and they're fearful and they sell off. And I think this is what caused the downturn in Alibaba. Uh, however, it does tend to pick up, okay? And I mean, this negative 5% uh, trend today, I think was because <clears throat> Trump said that they are going to blacklist Alibaba. So Trump administration, and this was out today, um, the Trump administration is concerning adding China's retail giant Alibaba and Tencent to a blacklist of Chinese companies that are allegedly owned or controlled by the Chinese military. Two people familiar with the matter said, <clears throat> again, I'm not going to speculate on whether this is true or not. I mean, of course, there's a risk always when you're investing in Chinese stocks, but hopefully with um, with the new government <clears throat> in the States, with uh, Biden as president, hopefully they'll at least try to repair some of the China relationship. Um, and earlier in the week, I believe that uh, the New York Stock Exchange actually went against and, you know, they were going to delist three Chinese companies, but they decided not to do that. OK, so, you know, it's a very volatile market, especially if you're investing in Chinese companies. Uh, but I mean, I just think this presents such an attractive valuation. OK, so they beat in the past four quarters all earnings. We can see here they, you know, uh, for their previous quarter, the estimate was two dollars, 18 cents per share, but they actually came in at two dollars, 78 cents per share. We can see their earnings over the past four years. 158 in billion in revenue, 43 billion in earnings. Fast forward four years, they're pretty much bottom line, 140, close to 150 billion against 509 billion in revenue. So that's just ridiculous growth, okay? Even quarterly growth is quite incredible. I mean, this is kind of uh, screwed up because of the pandemic, but still, you're looking at 28 billion in earnings just in the third quarter of 2020, okay? And if we're looking at analyst recommendation ratings, we see here that the average analyst recommendation is $335.40, whereas right now they're sitting at $227.60, okay? So, <clears throat> I mean, I, I think it represents a steep discount, okay? If we're looking at some of uh, the fundamentals here, forward P of 17 for such a fast-growing company, okay? We look at for the forward P of Walgreens is eight, but that's a, you know, they're gonna grow by maybe four or 5%. This company is expected to grow by, you know, 30% in 2022, 49% in 2021. And this company only has a forward PE of 17. Okay, I, I just think that presents a silly valuation. And again, I'm piling in on this stock. Again, 1.52% uh, short interest. So again, no one wants to short Alibaba at this valuation, right? It's nowhere near being, uh, you know, sky high valuation like some of the stocks in the market, okay? So that's one of the reasons why I really, really like Alibaba, okay? Uh, and again, if we're looking at their revenue growth, uh, you know, just in this current quarter, 64% expected revenue growth. Next quarter, 68%. Um, and current year overall, 49% in 2021 and 30% in 2022. And that's just ridiculous growth. Of course, if any regulation stifles this, uh, it's not going to be 30% growth. Um, it might be a bit less, but even 20% growth, double digit growth is incredible in a stock that's, uh, you know, pretty much attracted like some of the value plays on the market right now. Okay. Uh, and they have a history of having a earning surprise. Okay. As we can see here. All right. So I really like Alibaba and that's probably my, my second uh, biggest stock. And okay. The, this next stock is sort of tied in with another stock. All right. One's more speculative than another. Uh, I'm going to present the more speculative stock and that's H2O innovation. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to refresh, see what the price is now. And this stock here, I think presents such an incredible valuation. If we're looking at the yearly 
uh, stock price. We see here that it traded, you know, from 60 cents a share. Uh, but overall, year to date, we can see it's up by 132 percent. We can see this is pretty much uh, a micro cap stock at 174 million. So it's very, very small cap. Um, and I bought it in when it was around a dollar and 90 cents. Uh, and I'm sitting on a nice gain right now. And I mean, it might be a bit frothy at the moment, but I believe as of, you know, January 1st, this still represents a pretty good uh, valuation. Okay. And what is H2O Innovation? It's a water company. It focuses on desalination, providing water solutions. So pretty much to like utilities companies. It's based in uh, Canada, I believe in Quebec. Um, and it just got awarded a bunch of significant contracts for, I believe up to 10 million. It won, you know, water company of the year. <clears throat> and again, I really do like this company, partly because one, um, they have a history of beating or being in line with uh, analyst expectations, aside for first quarter of 2020 when they missed by uh, four cents. Um, and also, I think the most significant factor in this is that they're actually turning a profit. Okay, so if we're looking at their first quarter or quarterly estimates, we can see that their revenue was actually in the positive for the past two quarters. They earned 813,000 and 984,000 respectively in the past two quarters. So in Q2 and Q3 of 2020. Okay. Uh, and I think this trend will continue, especially based on their contracts. Um, and I mean, I think this company long term is a strong buy. Okay. And I mean, the main reason for this is water scarcity is only going to go up. And part of the solution is to have uh, more desalination plants. So pretty much taking ocean water and converting it to drinking water. Uh, and companies like H2O Innovation are going to thrive under those conditions, okay? A uh, huge concern is also that as water usage goes up and as water water becomes more scarce, there's going to be increased pressure to actually uh, do something about the water that we have in the lakes and cleaning that water. And uh, again, even with environmental concerns, H2O Innovation will come in uh, and clean up lakes, clean rivers, etc. okay? And make water more accessible to everyone um, and hopefully be awarded these large contracts, okay? And the stock that's tied with H2O Innovation, in my opinion, is Dropbox, okay? So <clears throat> this is a stock involved in the cloud computing space, all right, you know, in storage um, and headquarters in San Francisco. And this is probably the only um, tech stock out there that represents a pretty significant uh, discount to its valuation uh, with its stock price at <clears throat> even $21.85, okay? So... Again, this stock is involved in the cloud storage, um, even document signing space. Um, and the reason why this stock has kind of been beaten down, um, even over the past year, past five years, is because of slowing growth. Okay, and even if we look at the five year chart, we see that it was, you know, like around 39, close to $40 at one point, and now even it's down by 44%. Okay. Um, however, I think. And it didn't respond like some of the other stocks like Zoom um, and like Slack that were involved in 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 the work from home space. It kind of didn't respond and it kind of stayed flat. OK, and I, and I think that investors are missing out on this one. OK, so cloud storage and the space there is going to increase tremendously uh, by 2024. OK, and even though people are not working from home uh, very much, although that trend will still stay, you know, um, the cloud storage and everything is going to be transferred online. Okay. And Dropbox, even though it, let's say gets less of the pie, um, in terms of slower growth, there's just so much of the pie that it will still grow revenue by a pretty significant amount in my opinion. Okay. If we're looking at their earnings, they have beat earnings again in the past four quarters. Um, and again, they've eked out a profit in all the past four quarters of, you know, 32 million in earnings, uh, in, Q3, 17 million earnings in Q2. Um, and again, I think, again, the main concern here is that the revenue growth is only going to be like 14% for 2020. Next year, they're projected to do only 10% revenue growth. But again, I think Wall Street is sleeping on this one. And I, I think they might even handily beat these expectations uh, of just 10% growth. Okay. Um, again, this is a stock that I think people are sleeping on and that even though that they're projecting lower growth, they will be a beast to come. Okay. And one thing I should add is that it also has, it owns DocuSign, um, <clears throat> which is an e-signature platform 
which I think, again, many, many people are sleeping out on. If you look at HelloSign, which is the next basic player, its valuation is like 100 something billion dollars, okay, or $60 billion, okay? So for Dropbox to be valued at around, you know, close to 9 billion with this uh, e-signature platform, um, I, again, I think it's a silly valuation, okay? We're looking at a forward P of 23 for an American-owned uh, tech stock, and, I, and that is incredibly low by any standard, okay? Even with double-digit revenue growth, I think that's pretty, pretty damn low, okay? Um, and so that's all I have for you today. Let me know what you think of these top three or four stock picks. We're going to be monitoring them throughout the year. I own these stocks and I believe in these stocks. Uh, again, let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, you can check out a bunch of links, uh, such as a free stock and to support me on Patreon down below as well. Uh, and again, I appreciate all the support. Make sure to give it a like, thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video, guys.